I'm going to show you how I create my sticker sheets. Now there's a number of tutorials on how to make sticker sheets for um, printing and cutting on the Cricut, um, but a lot of them tend to use Photoshop. I don't use Photoshop, I use Illustrator. The reason being that I use Illustrator for a lot of my work, so it, I'm a little bit quicker with it. And I find that there's actually a lot more streamlined processes than what you would have to do in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you quickly how to do this. Um, and then I might do a follow up one of actually showing you then doing it in Cricut and making the actual stickers. So the first thing that I did was I created an artboard that was of the right dimensions. So working in inches, um, just because that's what most of you will probably see when you're in Cricut, even though I have mine on metric, because metric makes more sense. But the maximum size that you can make for a print then cut on Cricut is 6.75 by 9.25 inches. So I've created the artboard to show that. Now, I, um, when it actually will go into Cricut, it'll be on its side, but for the purposes of this, I'm going to put it in a landscape format so that we can actually see the sticker sheets together. You could do them one on their own and if you wanted to do a single sheet um, and then duplicate that in Cricut, you just need to halve that. So it will be 6 uh, 4.625 and 6.75 and then you would leave it in that. You want to make sure that you're on CMYK colour because that is for print. If you do it as RGB, you can. It just means that your color accuracy will be different when it actually prints it across. And you wanna have it at a high resolution. So um, 300 is generally the best one that you can go. If you do it for these, it's gonna be really pixelated and kind of bleh when you print it. So this is what your artboard will look like. So essentially I'm making two sheets per page and then on uh, Cricut it'll actually be tipped on its side uh, so it'll be 90 degrees this way if that makes any sense. So the first thing that I do is I create the actual template and the template then is my standard template and then I just change certain things like the actual headings will be the same I just change the text I'll change the design elements and I just put a background on just so that you can see what I'm doing for the purposes of this. When you export it, you need to have an actual color background, whether it's white or a color. Um, I generally won't print with a full color because it just wastes too much ink because they're not part of the actual sticker. So the best way to do it is you're going to be making two per artboards. So if I go to here, you can see what the size is. It says 4.262 uh, by 6.75. And then once you do that, you will line it up top and to the right. So you can, instead of having to kind of guesstimate by doing like this, and you're like, oh, is it, is it? Um, I mean, it is because it tells me that it is. But you can also, if you do a single click, you can type in your measurements here. Ta-da! And then you would just, this little toggle up here says align to artboard, and then you would just align it. Um, for these ones, because I'm doing two per thingy, I'm going to align it to the up and left for the left sheet and up and right for the other one, if that makes any sense. I've done two examples here so that you can see a lot of people like to do rounded ones, which is cool. And because Cricut's going to be cutting out the actual sheets for you, um, then you can actually set it. There's two ways that you can do it. You can either have it that you create a, a rectangle, as I've done on this one. And you see how there's these little dots down here? If you press shift and you click onto the little dots and you can see how my arrow has got like a little curvy line underneath it, it's how you change the corner radius. So keep press, I'm still holding shift and I'm clicking and then I'm gonna bring it back and you can change how much so you can have it like a lot or not. I think I've got mine set to 0.2 on the other ones and then it just gives you a nice rounded one. And then you would do the same. So you would only have to do it for the top. You shift, click, click, and you want to have it matching. So you can see radius is 0.2 inches. And that's as easy as that. Um, and the other way to do it is if you click and hold, you'll see that it has other options for your other shapes. And you can do a, um, a round rectangle tool, which will bring you up this. And then you can still change your um, radius. 
and you can also do the same thing where if you click once you've you set your di dimensions here and then you actually set your corner radius in here for example Ta -da! so there are a couple of really quick ways so this is literally just a rectangle this is literally just a rectangle and then I just added my text you can then so I do them all on the one layer you can then actually have that layer set as a template so with that layer highlighted you then click on these little hamburger thingies and then you'll slide down and you'll see template and once I hit template it will turn it into a template and it will also lock it you can just unlock it if you need to change anything in there then you bring in your artwork so my artwork uh, depending on what I've done so some I've got are actual vector designs and others are ones that I've done in procreate so these are procreate ones and I've um, exported as um, transparent PNGs and then I just drop them in then what you want to do is create the outline some people do their outlines in procreate but that requires like hand doing it and it never looked very good when I did that and it took me forever and it looked like poo so I'm like, why would I do that? But here is the hack. So, so what you need to do is I've created another layer underneath just to make it life a little bit easier. And then you can just combine it at the end. So you duplicate this. So con command C or control C for copy and then control shift V to paste in place. So you can see it's there. Hide the art layer. Now you want to do image trays. Now the image trays that I, I like to be able to have like a bit more control. So I've actually got it over here. Um, but to get to it normally you go object, uh, image trace, make, um, or might be up here. Um, that's just a matter of setting up your, your tool stuff up here. So I've got it over here and I go image trace and I do um, black and white. And then over here, I can actually control it a bit more. So I turn off, um, I click the ignore white and you can see how it's um, ignored now because I've done it, my, the outline is in white. So it's ignoring all that. So if I go to threshold, I can flood it a little bit more. So you gotta be careful because if you do it too much, it'll just flood the whole thing. And if you do it not enough, there's nothing there. So it's just moving it along until you get um, what you want to a reasonable amount it's never necessarily going to have everything but there's a way that you can fix it and i'll show you um so you can go here is view you get trace room result if you go outlines with source image it shows you how close it is to the original it doesn't have to be like pixel perfection because it's not really the point of what we're doing here if you're doing like if you're actually creating vector from hand-drawn artwork or something like that then but you need to do a lot more cleanup but anyway so I usually just fiddle with the threshold. I don't generally worry too much about this. It just depends on the actual artwork that I'm doing. I've got preview turned on. That makes it a little bit easier. Now this is the next step that's really important is you hit expand. Okay, and that'll create that. Now you can see that there's this little moon part in here. I've got um, two arrows. I usually use my hotkey. So you've got A, which is my direct selection tool which is this one and V is my selection tool if I hit a I can actually click on that and then I can just delete it otherwise you can do um, with your uh, selection tool is you click it double click it or bring it into this thingy and then um, click it again and I'll bring it up and then you can just delete it and then double click back out of it and you're fine whatever's easier okay so we're not quite done yet, but I can now turn on my artwork and you can see, and it's not like hanging over too much. Um, like there's a little bit of hangover, but it doesn't really matter for the purpose of this. Okay. So I'm going to turn that back off for the moment so that I can select it. Now I'd like to turn this back on so that I can see it. The next part that you're going to do is go object, path, offset path. You can choose how much you want it to um, offset from the original. So this is going to tell it how much. So I can turn it like one inch, which is going to be a full code. I can turn it to this, or I can turn it down. 
whatever is your fancy. I can't remember what I said, but whatever, whatever your preference. I have it onto round. I find that it is the nicest looking one. Um, but bevel just changes these edges here and mitre does the same thing and then you don't need to worry about that because you're going to have it on round and it'll just make it nicer and you hit okay um, see how it's got the inner and the outer if you want you just select them both and you want to combine them if you want um, you go to your pathfinder and you're going to hit the shape mode it needs to be the shape mode not the pathfinder and then this one just says unite and now it makes it one shape so I'm going to show you um, a more complex one and then you can just change the color to white if you want to have white whatever works for you so this one I'm going to control C control shift V so it pastes in place and you'll see there I do the same thing I'm going to go image trace black and white I'm going to open my little doodad tell it to ignore white now, because the skull is quite a light color, it's obviously going to want to try and ignore all that. So this is where you go back to your threshold and you push it up till you get to where you're happy. Hit expand. And like I said, we're not done yet. You need to actually make the outline. So select it, turn your artwork back on. Object, path, offset path. And then you can change it to whatever color you want okay there are some times when you'll end up with like areas that it won't fill in and you can literally do what i did like with the moon so on this one it'll have like a gap here and then i just delete it like i did with the moon on her that's how i do my artwork now i put all of my artwork onto the one layer if i do this um when i'm usually figuring it out i have them on two separate layers you can just select them all so just select it and then command G will group it all together and it'll put it on the one layer. So I can turn that off. When you export it, you need to unlock it. So turn your artwork layer off. You're going to go file, export, export as. Use artboards. Now I'm clicking use artboards because I've got stuff that's not on the actual artboard and it'll still try to save that within it for some reason. So then um, you want to click use artboards. If you don't have it hanging off it like I do, then you don't have to worry about that. Then you click export. You're going to have transparent um, or you can have it as wide if it's like a single sticker sheet. But I do transparent because I've got specific shapes and stuff. It's on high and then you're going to click OK. So you want to have your backing card on um, one file and then you're going to have your artwork as a separate file. It's really important that when you do your artwork, it is saved as a transparency because otherwise you won't see your backing card. So you do the same thing. Uh, you can use upwards for mine because I've got stuff all over it and make sure they're transparent. Um, otherwise it's going to put like a background behind it and then it'll obscure your artboard when you bring it in. Yeah, sticker sheet and that's how I do it so you can see that it's really quick now the reason that I don't flatten my layers um, because you'll need to flatten it when you bring in into Cricut for these so it doesn't try and cut out like each individual shape but the reason that I don't do it in my illustrator is if I want to come back and change anything or like I've realized that I've made a mistake or something isn't printing properly or whatever then if I flatten it I can't go then and edit but I can flatten it in Cricut without any issue so I just do that or you duplicate the file and then flatten the, the duplicate file and not the original. And that way you're all good. So hopefully that makes it a little bit quicker and easier for you. Um, as I said, I, I find this much more streamlined once it's all set up for me. I have a process that works very quickly. Um, it's a lot easier and cleaner than having to draw it by hand in Procreate. And I find the steps so much easier than doing it in Photoshop. Because once I've got my um, template set up, then I just use that for all of my other ones. So on my templates, I have my shop link, I have my logo, I have the name of the sticker sheets. And so this is still editable. It still works. I don't have to convert to outlines. It still works fine when I export it as a PNG. But you can also change to outlines. But it means that I can go back and edit this as I need to for anything else. I can yeah fiddle with it as much as I want. 
And then the reason that I've got um, white and back is originally I had drawn these on a black background. So I wanted to see what it would look like or to give people options because I've got mine on the cover of my notebook and my notebook has like a recycled leather cover. It looks better having black, whereas some people like to put it on pages and pages are white, so it might look better on white. So yeah, there you go. Hopefully that was really helpful. Let me know if it was and I'll do a follow up to show you how I do it in Cricut. Thanks guys. Bye.